Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to improve the video output of this Issue 2 ZX Spectrum. The upgrade is in the form of this S-Video module. It replaces the modulator in the ZX Spectrum with just three wires and two screws. And this kit will improve video output of Spectrums that have the RF modulators or have even been previously modified for composite video output. For this kit we'll need a soldering iron, some solder, either desoldering braid or a solder sucker, a small screwdriver, a small pair of pliers and an S-Video cable. I'm using an S-Video to SCART cable for my TV, but there are S-Video to HDMI converters available on the market. So let's switch on the soldering iron, ready to go. So first up, open the ZX Spectrum by removing the five screws from the underside and gently unplug the keyboard ribbon cables. If you're completing this mod on a 48K+, Plus, then remove the six screws from the sides, one from the front and one on the bottom. The modulator is going to need to be removed to allow the new S-Video card to be installed. So the first job is to remove the wires that go into the modulator. As you can see, I previously modified this spectrum to output composite video. So I'll remove this red cable and I previously removed the power wire as part of this modification. You're going to need both of these pads clear on the PCB to install two new wires later on. Our real work starts however with the removal of the RF modulator. It's held in place with two soldered lugs on the underside of the board. This will take some effort to remove, and if you do have a variable temperature soldering iron, turn up the temperature as the ground plane will suck away heat from the tip of the iron. I used both a soldering iron and a desoldering gun to fully remove the solder. The key is to take your time and allow the solder to flow. Once the modulator case has been loosened from the PCB, we can start by adding the S-Video board. Remove the two bolts from the new board. Each bolt has two nuts, one to create a standoff and the other to secure it in place. Insert the bolt from the underside of the PCB. You may find this a bit tight depending on how well the holes were cleared out. Once in, add the first of the two nuts and tighten in place. Now slide the PCB onto the two new posts, secure with the second set of nuts, and the holes are quite wide here to allow the board to be lined perfectly with the case later on. So that's the hardware installation now complete. Now let's get onto the wiring. Connect and solder the Luma cable and the plus five volts cable and these line up perfectly with the holes on the PCB. The last wire requires us to remove a capacitor from the board. C65 on this Issue 2 board is right next to the newly installed board, but on Issue 3 and above, C65 can be found on the left hand side of the PCB. This capacitor needs removing and the cable needs to be attached to the positive side of where the capacitor once was. Once everything is connected, it's time to test. Making sure there's no solder splashes, rogue component legs or metal work that could short out the PCB, attach the S-Video cable, switch on the TV and power up the spectrum. On an Issue 2 board you may find that the video output requires some adjustment. You can achieve this by adjusting the two variable resistors. Start by adjusting VR2 then VR1 in small increments to bring the default screen back to a grey colour. So let's have a look at some before and after shots. I've taken this video from my phone pointing towards the TV, so you may see some strange shapes on the colours. You won't see any of these strange artefacts in real life. However, you will notice how the edge of the lettering has dancing ants around the characters, and how the colour bleeds on the edges. So let's have a look at the S video output of the same screen. There's no dancing ants, and the edges are clean and crisp. There is some slight ghosting, but nowhere near as bad as it once was. In games, the difference is also quite noticeable. On Death Chase, for example, the trees are wobbly and the edges are fuzzy on the composite video output. With the S-Video output, the trees move cleanly and the video runs smooth. Just look at the difference on the motorbike handlebars. So let's look at Manic Miner. The intro screen is shimmering quite badly and the red flooring seems to be moving, but on the S-Video, it's rock steady. So there we go, a simple yet very effective modification. I bought mine from ZX Renew for just over £15. I've put a link in the description below to this board and also to the SCART cable I'm using too. So there we go. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.